Hello, everybody. My name is Holly O'Neill. I'm a facilitator with Crossroads Consulting here in Whatcom County, and I'm going to give a short overview of the Justice Project Implementation Planning. So here we go. The project planning team is Barry Buchanan, Stephen Gockley, Jack Hovenier, and Tyler Schroeder. And the support team is myself and my colleague, Marty Solomon, and then Kathy Halka and Jill Nixon, who are providing the uh, coordination and administration to keep sure you know all the communication things are happening properly. So really glad to be working with everybody and with all of you. We've got from now until uh, June, basically, to create this implementation plan together. So here we go. I'm going to talk about the foundation of the planning effort, the scope of work, and the implementation planning process itself. So the Justice Project Needs Assessment is the is the body of work that we're building the implementation plan on. And that, that needs assessment was built upon previous analysis and ongoing efforts to prevent and reduce incarceration. And the report, the needs assessment, uh, identifies at the end 16 needs that are the highest priority system services and facilities gaps in our criminal legal system and 32 recommendations to address those needs. So if you haven't read it yet, I totally recommend you read it because it's a beautiful body of work. It has a lot of background. It really gives you a sense of the, the issues that we were grappling with and, and what needs to change. The <clears throat> this, this needs assessment was heavily influenced by a couple of things. The Vera report, if you're familiar with that, the sequential intercept model, which helps us kind of understand the, the different parts of a system and, and how people move through a system. And then, of course, we have the work of the Incarceration Prevention and Reduction Task Force, the IPRTF, that has been really working so hard in so many ways and really helped us think through the different elements. And the BEGAT, the Behavioral Health Gap Analysis Team, was formed this last year to uh, really dig down into some of the tricky issues with behavioral health and how that system is needs to improve. And then of course we had the stakeholder advisory committee. So the stakeholder advisory committee really drove this work forward and did all that, that heavy lifting in terms of grappling with the issues doing a lot of like trying to understand the issues, if dialoguing on, on what seemed like, like most important and what needed to change and how to change it. So it included 38 voting members representing local government, community-based services, criminal legal services, advocates, and people with lived experience. And we had 10 meetings about give or take once a month between January 22 and January 23 and uh, eight fairly intensive workshops and then committee meetings uh, to develop the work and then surveys in between meetings so that we could really try and build a, a shared understanding and unity in terms of what, what, uh, you know, what needed to come out of that needs assessment. So, and I just have to say, for people who have participated in SAC, they were amazing. <laughs> just so much heart and care and intelligence in that room and really a commitment to, to making a difference. So hats off to them. We also had a lot of public input. So we had an online community survey with the 1,700 people responding. We had a town hall. We had six listening sessions that involved participants from immigrant, tribal, and previously incarcerated uh, communities and their families so that we could really make sure that people who might not otherwise have access to the conversation were able to connect and make sure their voices were heard. And then we also sur did surveys of people currently incarcerated in the Whatcom County Jail and people working in the jail as well. So we really tried to, to gather as much input as we could to inform our work. So Here's where we have it, that foundation, the people who are responsible for these systems and the people who are affected by these systems. 
We came out with a beautiful needs assessment re report. It's big. There's a lot in there. And from that, the recommendations, which are then going to be what we work with, with the implementation planning, because it's not just enough to have, have these recommendations. We need to now take the next step. Like, what are we going to do to, to implement? So that's where we are now. We're going to be looking at the three interrelated components of the need, needs assessment that emerge through our process of so systems, services, and facilities, which are all inextricably linked. So what you do in one place affects how the other, you know, the other two parts of this Venn diagram. And really it's it's based on on, I think what came through the last year is a shared understanding that we need a balanced approach. It's not one way or the other. It's it's a complex system and we need to think of it in that way. So we wanna be reducing crime and incarceration and improve public health and safety. That's where we're going by addressing the gaps in community-based behavioral health services, which is really important to making it these, these changes that we need to make. Uh, responding to lower level offenses through the provision of incarceration prevention, diversion, and alternative services. So we're keeping people out of the jail and then having a jail that is safe for those who are in it, for people who are incarcerated and those who work and volunteer there. And then the services that we need to support successful community reentry. So our scope for the implementation planning is we want to be identifying the actions and projects to advance the recommendations, to move things forward in a one to three year time frame. Like what are we gonna do to make it happen, to make, to make that, make those changes. Always turn off your phone before you start a video. Okay, here we go. So the scope as per the Whatcom County Council resolution, paste which was passed in February of 2023 is what we want this implementation plan to uh, basically include. So systems and services and their costs and how we're going to pull those off, proposed facilities concepts for community services, jail facilities concepts, including location and planning level costs, identification of the county departments, community leaders, and organizations to guide the implementation and make it happen, and a funding approach. Uh, the, you know, the needs assessment, we did not deal with funding. This, but now, now is the time we have to start talking about what this is all going to cost and, and how we're going to make sure we have the money to do what we need to do. All right, the the process is starts and, the, and the, the, the heart of the work is, are, are these workshops. So the participants are the IPRTF and subject matter experts. That's you all. And we have a very tight schedule. Look at this. It's, it's not even barely a month to deal with systems, services, facilities at the community level, facilities, the jail and accessory services, and then funding. So that all has to happen pretty fast. We also are doing as soon as as that that step in the process is coming to a close, we're going to move directly into public input with focus groups and the town hall that will happen on May 24th. We'll be checking in regularly with the Law and Justice Council and with County Council. And the aim is to present the implementation plan to council uh, in June. That's the hope. One of the key tools that we're going to use to make sure we can it can get the level of detail that we're going to need to get to make sure that that the implementation strategy is uh, concrete and robust and and actionable is we've prepared these worksheets and the that enables the participants to upload the information that they have into a shared database so that uh, there's going to be um, a body of work for us to actually discuss <laughs> at the workshops. So if, for those of you who are participating, I just wanna say it's absolutely critical you upload your content in all these areas to the worksheet, then Marty and I take that information <clears throat> and we kind of 
do some analysis and figure out, oh, hey, based on what's emerging, what do we have to talk about that's going to be really meaningful and help move us forward? And of course, this is all transparent, so you'll be able to see the whole thing. It'll be a rolling process. So each workshop, again, these topics are interconnected, but each workshop then leads into the next. So if we're talking about systems, we're kind of getting into it. <clears throat> then we draft some material, we bring it to the next workshop, we talk about that, get it a little more refined, and then move into the next topic. So we'll be, you know, then services, then the community facilities, and the jail facilities, and then funding, and checking in with surveys uh, periodically throughout the process to test for alignment and gather more input. Okay, so that's basically how it's going to work. Uh, again, using the worksheets throughout our process, if, if you're a participant, is really going to be critical. And both if you're in the workshops or if you're part of the, the public at large, please email and let us know what you think. Emails are posted and made public on the Justice Project website, and they are really important. We read them carefully and we think about how to, you know, how those those ideas, uh, you know, those those. Um, additions help us understand what we need to do. So thank you for your time, uh, for your commitment, and for just being part of, of really doing something important in our community. So thank you and have a wonderful day and hope to see you soon.